Chapter 16 Dunwing was the widowed mother of Warbeak. She was also sister to the mighty King Bull Sparrow. When her daughter was shot down by the arrow, she had given her up as dead. Now that she was back, safe and sound, she stroked and scolded her at the same time with relief. When she could get a chirp in edgeways, Warbeak related the strange story to her mother in the rapid Sparrow dialect. As she was doing this, Matthias lay pinned to the floor by the claws of many fierce Sparrow warriors. As far as he could tell, the place was one enormous loft. This was the court of King Bull Sparrow, whose wrath seemed about to descend upon him. The sparrows lived higgledy-piggledy here in one great untidy tribe. The roof above met in the shape of an upturned V, thus making the court a long triangular structure. Under the eaves at either edge were countless scruffy-looking nests, all of which appeared to be filled to overflowing with shrieking baby sparrows. At one end, the loft was blocked off by roofing slates and old nesting materials. This was the king's own private chamber. Matthias estimated that it was probably underneath where the weather vane was situated. King Bull Sparrow was not a bird to be trifled with. He noticed the young mouse's evident interest in his surroundings and quickly diverted his attention with a savage kick at the helpless figure. What a mouse worm wanting court of king, he snapped. Matthias, realizing that this was no time for idle chit-chat, promptly shouted out in a loud, courtly manner, O oh, king, I come to return one of your brave young warriors. The statement caused an immediate hullabaloo. Bull Sparrow flapped his wings once, and quiet descended. He cocked his head to one side, assessing this bold young intruder. You lie, mouse worm, not help Sparrow, mouse enemy, he shrieked. King Bull Sparrow say killy enemy, k killy. Instantly, Matthias found himself fighting for his life. The Sparrow soldiers piled in on him, jabbering, clawing, and pecking. He managed to get a paw free and struck out left and right, dealing hefty blows to several of the sparrows. Matthias realized that he would soon be overwhelmed as more sparrows pressed in on him urged on by the mad exhortations of their king. Kill it! Kill it! Make Massa dead! Kill it! As Matthias battled to free his other paw, he felt himself enveloped by two pairs of wings. Warbeak and Dunwing were attempting to shelter him. The mother sparrow was crying out. No, Kitty! Mouse good! Save my egg, sparrow! The king was not convinced. Mouse enemy! Gotta make dead. King Bull Sparrow had no fledglings of his own. Warbeak, who was his favorite niece, called out to her uncle, appealing for mercy. No, no, King Bull. Not kitty, Matthias Mouths. Him save Warbeak. Give Sparrow word to Mouse that you know kitty. The king sprang in among his warriors, scattering them like chaff. They cowered before him as he shouted out a new edict. Fool worms, stop. King said, no kitty mouse. We have sparrow word of my sister's egg chick. The sparrow warriors backed off. Matthias picked himself up. Luckily, he had not come to much harm. He dusted his habit off. <sighs> Thank you once again, Warbeak, my friend. I owe you my life. The king issued orders to two sparrow warriors. Battle lock, wind plume, get a bag. Find out what mouse carry. Matthias stood firm as the haversack was pulled from his back. The two warriors could not figure out how to open it. They tore at the material with beak and claw until it gave way. The contents scattered upon the floor. Matthias stood respectfully to one side as the king rummaged through his meager possessions. King Bull Sparrow drank some water from the canteen. He spat it out. No worms. Only mouse food, he commented. Warbeak sighed wistfully. She looked longingly on as her uncle found the package of candied nuts and ripped it open. Bull Sparrow dubiously sampled one. His face lit up with pleasure. 
This good food for Spara King. Not good for Mouseworm. Me keep. He tucked the candied chestnuts under his wing, then picked up the collar and lead and beckoned to Matthias. Mouseworm, come here. You're lucky King let her live. The young mouse approached the sparrow with trepidation, not wanting to antagonize the moody, dangerous bird. The sparrow king buckled the collar tightly about Matthias's neck. Scarcely leaving him room to breathe, he attached the lead and laughed aloud. Dutifully, the other sparrows laughed with him. Matthias felt his blood boil. He tried to contain his rising temper. The court of the sparrow king was no place to have tantrums. Mentally, he promised himself that he would never again use a collar on any living creature. The indignity was unspeakable. Bull Sparrow handed the lead to Warbeak. Turning to his subjects, he chuckled insanely and pointed at Matthias. King Bull Sparrow, spare mouse. How you like him for pet, my niece? Mouse, you obey my sister and her egg chick. <laughs> Funny, huh? <laughs> All the sparrows laughed loud and long, vying with each other to show the most merriment. The king was a completely unpredictable tyrant. When he made a joke, it was always funny. Warbeak gave the lead a tug and whispered to her friend, Matthias, you see Warbeak and mother, not make laugh. Sorry. The young captive winked at his warder. He was beginning to hatch a plan. Don't worry, my friend. At least I'm alive. Warbeak handed the lead to her mother. This Dunwing, she mother. Good sparrow, not her mouse. See? Dunwing gave the lead a light pull. She gave Matthias a smile and a nod. He decided that he liked Warbeak's mother. The king issued his orders to Warbeak and Dunwing. You keep Mouseworm on lead. No wonder, no stray. Give plenty work. Much kick, like this. Bull Sparrow raised a kick at Matthias, who dodged nimbly and started to dance and sing with a silly expression on his face. The king stood with his head cocked to one side, amazed at the performance of this strange mouse. Matthias pranced comically about, improvising a song as he went. Up higher than before, I'm near the roof indeed. The king gave me a collar, his sister holds the lead. Round and round he skipped, repeating the verse over and over. Bull Sparrow flapped his wings and laughed hysterically. <laughs> Look, Battlehawk! See, Wind Plume! Mouseworm be hurt in head brain! <laughs> you crazy! <laughs> Obediently, everybody laughed with the mad monarch. After a while, the sparrows drifted off, some to their nests, others to hunt worms. A chosen few went with the king to play Three Feathers, a popular sparrow gambling game of which Bull Sparrow was very fond. Dunwing and her daughter led the dancing mouse off to their nest at the rear of the court, under the farthest eaves. Despite its outwardly untidy appearance, the nest was neat and cozy on the inside. Warbeak had gathered Matthias's gear together, repacking it into the torn haversack. She returned it to her mouse friend eyeing him in an apprehensive manner. Matthias be sick in head? She inquired. The young mouse lay back gratefully in Dunwing's nest and smiled reassuringly at them both. Not at all. I'm as sane as you are. However, if I act as if I'm mad, then maybe your king and his warriors will not regard me as a threat. Perhaps they will leave me alone and forget about me. Dunwing looked up from the meals she was preparing. Her eyes were serious. Matthias must do right thing, she said. Bullsparrow be wicked, bad temper. Sometimes Dunwing think Bullsparrow mad. Bestie thinks you no harm, mouse. Matthias bowed deferentially to her. Thank you, Dunwing. You are a very brave sparrow. You put yourself and Warbeak at great peril, saving me as you did. Dunwing served them both some food. Thankfully, Matthias noted that she refrained from putting worms and dead insects on his portion. The mother sparrow watched him with soft, intelligent eyes. 
The mouse was about the same age as her daughter. Matthias, save my Warubik, she said. We have no sparrow warrior to look after us. Warbeak brave like father was. Now father, he dead. I learned to stand up for us till Warbeak grow into great warrior someday. The hours slipped by as the three conversed. Matthias learned much of the sparrow customs and way of life. Dunwing, being the king's sister, was of royal blood. Her husband had been killed the previous spring in a battle with some starlings. He had saved the life of the king, whereupon Bull Sparrow had vowed to care for her and her daughter. But he had instantly forgotten his promises, leaving the pair to fend for themselves. Only in moments of urgency would Dunwing remind him of his vow, knowing that Bull Sparrow was a dangerous despot. So normally, Dunwing maintained a diplomatic silence in his presence. Sometimes, Bull Sparrow would retire to his private chamber. He would remain in there, brooding for days, suddenly emerging to fire his warriors with grandiose schemes and wild ideas. No one dared to disobey him, even though half an hour later he had forgotten his previous foolhardy notions and wandered off to hunt worms. Later, he would return to find that his plans had not been carried out. In a furious squabble of accusation and recrimination, he would demote officers and promote the most unlikely soldiers from the ranks. Next day, he had forgotten it all again, and was hatching more crazy plans. Matthias was constantly amazed at the mode of life in the Sparrow Court. The Sparrows showed no kindness or civility to one another, often fighting savagely among themselves on the slightest pretext. Warriors, and even fledglings, joined in. The injuries they inflicted upon each other were appalling. Sparrow folk knew nothing of the Firemaker's art. By day... The court was illuminated by sunlight that streamed in through the cracked and broken slates and slanted up through the eaves. All food was eaten uncooked, worms and small insects providing the main diet. The sparrow did not discriminate between different species of insects. All came under the general heading of worm. Thus, a sparrow might make a meal of a butterfly or a grasshopper and refer to it as worm feed. Worm was also used to denote an enemy, or a coward, or anything alien to the sparrow. Fresh flowers and tender shoots of vegetation were used to supplement the worm diet, also berries and whatever fruit a sparrow could carry in flight. Matthias was grateful for this. He abhorred the idea of eating live worms or dead insects. There was no strict routine of chores ever carried out, Apart from parents feeding fledglings, everything was left undone until tomorrow, which meant it never was done. The evidence of this lay all about the court. Dirt, dust, filth, and general chaos prevailed. Matthias gradually found that once he could keep pace with the speedy delivery of sparrow language, it was relatively simple. Some of the sparrow chattered with such rapidity that Matthias was sure they could not understand themselves. Matthias was not sure whether Warbeak knew of his mission to bring back Martin's sword. Certainly Dunwing did not. The young mouse had had a good look round most of the court, but the sword was not to be seen. Matthias reasoned that it must be in the one place he had not yet explored, the private chamber of the king. He thought long and hard about how he might obtain access to the royal apartment. He did not want to cause trouble for his friends, nor did he want them to suspect what he had come for. And supposing he ever did regain the sword, the next problem would be how to take it safely back down to the floor of the abbey and his own kind. Matthias figured that he had been in his new surroundings for a night and a day. Towards the evening of that day, he was sitting outside the nest, repairing his torn haversack and taking stock of his personal effects. Each time a sparrow passed by, he would grin vacantly and strike up his song, no one bothered to take much heed of him. Warbeak flew in from a lone worm hunt. She stood watching Matthias. Me hunt worms, she chirped. Bring dandelions for Matthias. Mouse like eat flowers. Matthias replied in sparrow language. Warbeak good hunter. Mouse like flower. Make good worm food. Where be done knowing mother? Warbeak pointed to the king's chamber. Then we get bull sparrow worm food ready. King have no wife to make food. Matthias acted unconcerned. He pulled at the collar to loosen it. 
Cut a head, Mousenick, he grinned. Warbig shrugged sympathetically. King's you water? None can take off. Me sorry. Matthias continued sorting through his belongings. He came across an unopened package. What a stroke of luck. It was candied chestnuts. Hastily, he slipped them into the haversack, hiding the nuts from Warbeak. Under normal circumstances, he would gladly have given them to his friend. But this was different. Matthias needed them as bait. They continued gossiping until Dunwing returned. After a decent interval, the young mouse spoke to her. You go to King's room a lot of time. Dunwing nodded. Me only sparrow King Bull let into there. She laughed. He lazy sparrow, not make on one food. Matthias shared her laughter. Bet your king not know how to make on one food, he chuckled. What do you think, Dunwing? Matthias find a gift for a king? The sparrow looked up sharply. What mouse mean, gift? Matthias drew close and whispered conspiratorially. You remember how King Bull like mouse candy nuts. Me find more. You take me. We give nuts to King. Dunwing looked doubtful. What for mouse won't give nuts to King? Matthias spread his paws as if stating the obvious. So King let mouse free. Wanna get back to mouse home. Matthias held his breath and watched Dunwing. Finally, her face softened. She smiled sympathetically. All right, Matthias. We try. Not too much harm. But remember, not make Bull spare a bad temper. He kill you, sure. With an inward sigh of relief, Matthias swept up the packet of nuts. Thank you, spare mother, he said. Must not make trouble for you. Nuts make King happy, you see. With Matthias trailing behind her on his lead, Dunwing tapped on the slates which formed King Bull Sparrow's wall. An irate voice came from within. Fly away, Sparrow! King want to sleep? Dunwing realized they had chosen a bad moment. Nevertheless, she persisted, this time tapping harder. Let in, King Brother. It Dunwing and Crazy Mouseworm. Got a gift for Great King. A sleepy head poked around the door opening. Bull Sparrow blinked owlishly at them and yawned in their faces. Better be portent. Majesty no like to be walked, he grumbled. As they entered the room, Matthias skipped about and sang his ditty. Whipping out the packet, he selected a nut and popped it straight into the open beak of the astonished ruler. Must well find more candy nuts for Big King Sparrow, Matthias giggled. Fetch here quick. Maybe mouse give king all the nuts. King let the mouse go home free. The king munched and chomped greedily on the sweet nut, eyeing the packet covetously. <laughs> mouse were give king all the nuts. Majesty have great things on mind. Me think about. Let the mouse go free home. Matthias capered about. He went down on one knee, offering the nuts. Bull Sparrow snatched the parcel. Hoggishly, he stuffed far more of the nuts into his beak than he could cope with. Closing his eyes in ecstasy, he gobbled furiously. Pieces of nut falling from his beak littered his breast feathers. Matthias's eyes roved about the chamber, searching. It was nothing special as sparrow habitations went. A straw palais, some butterfly wings stuck to the wall by way of decoration. In one corner... There was a huge, overstuffed old chair. How it got there would forever remain a mystery. Matthias's attention was held by something that protruded out of the back of the chair. It was an old-fashioned-looking object made from black leather, with lots of silver trimming, identical to the belt he was wearing. A scabbard of Martin's sword. Surely the sword must be somewhere close by. Matthias wished that he could see the back of the chair to confirm his discovery but he had to bring himself back to the issue at hand. King Bull Sparrow crammed the last candy chestnuts into his beak and chomped with evident enjoyment. Dunwing attempted to press for justice. King eat gift? Now mouse go free? The king held out a grasping claw. More! Mouse one got more candy nut gift for majesty? Matthias remained kneeling. He appealed to the gluttonish ruler. Oh, King, mouse have no more candy nuts. 
O king, mouse have no gotten more candy nuts. Give all to great majesty. Now you let mouse go free home, he said hopefully. Boo Sparrow pecked nut morsels from his feathers, his eyes gleaming craftily. Ah, now king give Sparrow word. I say if mouse worm give more candy nuts, then go free, but must give lot. The king spread his wings wide apart. This mini lot, the young mouse bowed his head. But majesty, me got no more nut. Unexpectedly, Bull Sparrow's mood changed for the worse. He crumpled the empty dock leaf packet and hurled it into Matthias's face. Mouseworm, get more! More, you hear? His eyes shone madly as the feathered hackles rose around his neck. King not argue with crazy Mouseworm. You get gone now, plenty quick, or me carry. Go now, Majesty sleep. Sensing that the king had become dangerous, Dunwing did not hesitate. Roughly, she dragged the mouse by the lead from the chamber. Matthias spluttered with uncontrolled rage. Dunwing, how you let stupid of be king of sparrow? He choked. The mother sparrow shushed soothingly and dragged Matthias off to the safety of her nest. Warbeak had gone off hunting again. Dunwing sat down and tried to reason with the angry young mouse. Matthias, not let King Bull hear him say, stupid off. You be dead, Warmbait, much soon. Matthias opened his mouth to protest. The sparrow silenced him with an upraised wing. All birds know that King Bull, mighty fighter. Him save sparrow tribe many times from enemy. He's sometime lazy, sometime bad temper, but not stupid. Bull sparrow, sly like fox, only pretend to be stupid, just like Matthias. Dunwing had guessed that Matthias had gone to the king's chamber for other reasons than to gain his freedom. This was a very wise mother bird. He decided to put all of his cards on the table. Dunwing, listen, I want to tell you a story, he said. It is all about the mice who live in the abbey beneath us, and of one mouse in particular called Martin the Warrior. The sparrow listened intently as the young mouse unfolded the story of Redwall Abbey and the part that he was playing in its hour of need. When Matthias had finished his tale, Dunwing saw the truth of it in his open face. She drew close and said quietly, Matthias, Dunwing knew. First day you come here, I see belt you wear. It all same as thing behind chair in King's room. But why? Matthias interjected. Again, Dunwing silenced him. Young mouse, sit still, she said. Now me tell you story. Many time ago, before my mother was egg, king named Bloodfeather, he steal sword from North Point. Sword makes better folk proud, brave fighters, strong egg chicks, much worm food to eat. Sword hang in court of Sparrow. Bloodfeather die, who know how? Boo Sparrow become king. My husband, Greytail, tell me. My husband, Greytail, tell me this for he die. Bull Sparrow wear so Bull Sparrow wear Bull Sparrow wear warrior sword. Case be too heavy. Leave case behind in the room, back a chair. Carry sword and claw feet. King Bull he much show off. Dig worm with sword. My husband go longer with him. One day. They hunt in moss flower trees. Giant worm come, one with poison teeth. All the time say as more dears like that. Boo Sparrow drop big sword, even he's scared of poison teeth. Giant worm curl round sword handle. Bull Sparrow, he order my husband Greytail, get sword back. Greytail try, but worm bite with poison teeth. He hurt bad, but fly back to court with Bull Sparrow. They leave sword in moss flower with giant worm. My husband die. Boo Sparrow say hurt in starling fight. Not true. Greytail tell me all for he die. Warwick still egg, not know how father die. Matthias watched sympathetically as Dunwing fought back her tears. Gently, he patted the widowed sparrow. Greytail be mighty warrior to face poison teeth alone. You glad Warwick be his egg chick. Dunwing smiled through her tears. Matthias be good mouse. 
There followed an embarrassed silence. Matthias spoke half aloud. So, it seems my quest has been in vain. But what of the scabbard? Scabbard mean sword case? Dunwing inquired. Matthias nodded. Me tell her about sword case, Dunwing said bitterly. King Boaspara be frightened to tell her rest Spara that he lose sword. <laughs> he not know great tale tell me, but I watch king. Dunwing know. Bull Spara still pretend sword and case. That way he stay king. If I tell her, he kill me in Warbeak. This I know. Someday, Warbeak my egg be queen. She have royal blood. Then Spara folk be better, be happy. Bull Spara rule for now. <laughs> Loose heart, Loose sword. No good crazy birds, Bull Spara. That night, as he settled down to sleep in Dunwing's nest, Matthias had a good deal to reflect upon. So, King Bull had lost the sword to a giant worm with poison teeth. Matthias knew the description fitted only one thing, a snake. Poison probably meant it was an adder. He had never seen an adder, nor any other type of snake. At Rudwall, he had learned of snakes from the talk of others. They spoke of the adder as if it was a reptile that was half legend, half nightmare. It was said that even the father abbot himself would flatly refuse to treat a snake, no matter how bad its condition might be. Luckily, there had never been cause to. There had never been reports of an adder in the area of Mossflower. That was why most creatures tended to treat it as a mythical reptile. But wise ones like Constance, the abbot, and old Methuselah assured everyone that the adder was cold, deadly fact. They said that in all the world, there was nothing more feared. The strong coils, hypnotic eyes, and poison fangs. Matthias shuddered. It sounded even more fearsome than Clooney the Scourge. How could a mere mouse take the sword from this adder that Dunwing had described? The one that said, Asmodeus. Matthias tried to put it from his mind. Gradually, sleep overtook him. You come quick, Mouseware. King want to see you. Roughclaw seized Matthias, dragging him from the nest only half awake. It was the two sparrow warriors, Battlehawk and Windplume. They lugged Matthias off without further explanation, tugging cruelly on his lead. The last things he saw before he was pulled off into the darkness of the court were the pale, worried faces of Dunwing and Warbeak. He shouted to reassure them. Don't worry, I'll be all right. Take care of yourselves. Battlehawk hit Matthias in the face with a stiff, bony wing. Mouseworm, shut me, me, killy. Not before I see your king, you won't, the young mouse retorted. Battlehawk aimed a kick at him, but Windplume deflected it. Leave Mouse alone. You killy him? King killy us. Windplume grinned at Matthias. Mouse cheeky, but brave like Sparrow Warrior. King Bull Sparrow had finished napping. Something was disturbing him about the captive mouse. He had been too busy guzzling candied chestnuts to let it bother him. But now that he was wide awake, it hit him like a ton of bricks. The mouse worm's belt, what had taken Dunwing a single glance to recognize, had finally dawned on the king. Matthias's belt was the same as the sword case behind his own chair. A broken piece of mirror reflecting the moonlight was the only illumination in the king's chamber. He dismissed his two warriors to wait outside. The king of the sparrow folk sat staring at the young mouse in silence. Matthias stood his ground bravely, not knowing what to expect. Bull Sparrow stood up. He strutted about in front of Matthias, then around behind him. Matthias felt his belt gripped from behind by strong claws. The crazed king whispered close in his ear. Where mouse worm get belt? Matthias swallowed hard. He tried to act casual. Belt? Oh, you mean this belt? Mouse always have belt for many long time. Not know where me get. Thump! Matthias hit the floor as the king shoved him fiercely in the back. Must lie. King bull, not worm fool. Where you get? Tell, tell! As he shouted madly, the sparrow pulled at the belt. 
Matthias knew he was facing death with the insane ruler in one of his lunatic rages. He must think fast. No got more candy nuts, the young mouse cried. Please, Majesty, give Mouse Word no more candy nuts. Me give Great King this belt, then he let the mouse go free home. Matthias's plea had the desired effect upon the Mad King. He sat in the big chair, his eyes glinting cunningly. Spare law say king must kill him, mouse worm, but me good majesty, no kill him, mouse. Give belt to king. Matthias unbuckled the belt and handed it over. King Bull fondled it, then fastened it on himself. As he admired the belt, strutting in front of the broken mirror, the sparrow spoke in a normal voice. Nice, good belt. Mouse know of great sword? Instantly. Matthias was on his guard. One wrong word might spell death for Dunwing and Warbeak. He must affect ignorance to allay the king's suspicion. Oh, Majesty, that good belt. Make king look fine, like mighty warrior. Not look so good on mouse. Bull Sparrow appeared flattered. He preened himself, then asked the question again, this time in a coaxing tone. Surely... Matthias no of great sword. In spite of his dangerous predicament, Matthias was inwardly amused at the king's use of his name. Slumping to the floor, he sat with his head between his paws, the picture of dejected innocence. Oh, mighty king, must not have more candy nuts, not know about sword thing, not even have belt now. Me die if not soon go free. Please let the poor mouse worm go home. Matthias's show of pathos seemed to cheer the king. He tucked his wingtips into the belt that he had fooled the mouseworm into giving him. <laughs> he had eaten all the mouse's nuts, too. Feeling no end of a fine bird, he gave a sharp whistle that brought his two warriors on the double. Look at this mouseworm, he scoffed. He not happy that I spare him. You take mouse back to my sister, Dunwing. Tell her king say, take care of mouseworm. He give me good gifts, candy nut, belt. Maybe mouse find more gift for good majesty who let live. Take way now. Must get more sleep. Go. As Matthias was dragged off once more, he pretended to cry out in distress. This caused Bull Sparrow much amusement. He waved a wing in farewell, calling out to the prisoner. Get a good sleep, mouse worm. Think a way to get more gift for majesty. <laughs> the two warriors and a nearby fledgling who was half awake laughed obediently with their king. Matthias thanked his lucky stars that he had once more come out alive. Had he refused to give the belt, he would surely have died. Anyhow, he reflected, it was only a temporary loan. As he planned on stealing the scabbard from Bullsparrow, why not the belt to go with it?